Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to use your graphing calculator. And um, I know depending on what course you were in last year and whoever your teacher was, um, you probably use the graphing calculator a little bit differently, and maybe your knowledge varies slightly. Um, quite honestly, in Honors Algebra 2, you could pretty much get away without having your gra graphing calculator for most of the time. And I'm letting you know that is not the case for pre-calc. Pre-calc, you need to have your graphing calculator all the time with you because we do quite a bit for, with it. So the first thing I would like for you guys to do is um, if you could go ahead and open up this calculator worksheet or print it out, somehow just have it out in front, um, rather than take actual notes, um, we're just going to do some of these problems together. And um, I'm going to show you exactly what to do on our graphing calculator. So I'm trusting that you guys can read, so rather than go um, back and forth for a moment, um, I'm just going to kind of verbalize to you guys the computation we're talking about and visually show you what to do on your lovely graphing calculator. And I know I'm nerdy, I have a graphing calculator on my computer, or that just means I'm really cool. So um, one thing, I have the TI-84 Plus Silver Edition, um, but honestly, if you have any version of the TI-83 or the TI-84, you are totally fine, and the key sequence will be the same as I'm going to be doing. Um, one quick thing is that the key sequence is going to show up down here, so if you are unsure of what I pressed, you can look down there and I'll show you exactly what I pressed. So the first computation, it says the gray minus key located on the right-hand side of the um, calculator, which is right here. This is used for subtraction, and the white one, which is down below near the bottom of the calculator, is used for negative numbers. Okay, and if you use subtraction in the wrong place, it will tell you that you have a syntax error or some sort of error. So if we wanted to go ahead and do negative 3 minus 5, I would type in the negative sign 3 subtraction 5. And obviously it's negative 8. We all know that, otherwise you wouldn't be in high school. But um, hopefully that just demonstrates the difference between those two keys. Um, the next thing I want to talk about are exponents. Um, I know most of you guys know that this caret button represents exponents. And so if I was doing 2 cubed, I would press 2 caret 3. And I want to point out that mine, and some of your guys' will do this, it actually makes it into an exponent. For others of you, it will just show 2 and then the caret sign in a 3, and that's fine. It will give us 8 regardless of the way that we input it into our calculator. The other thing that we can do with enter, which is really cool, is um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I spend all this time typing in a problem, and then I realize I made a dumb mistake, and I should have put like a plus instead of a minus or something like that. So if you guys ever press second, enter, it will give us our previous entry. So for example here, let's say we're computing the value of parentheses, and parentheses are your guys' best friends, I promise you, um, 7.6 minus 4.3, then I'm going to close that and I'm taking it to the negative 1.2 power. See what I did there, I made us practice all those skills we just talked about. And I'm pressing enter, and it tells me this decimal value is my answer. But let's say I made a mistake, and it really was supposed to be the plus. Um, as I said earlier, I'm going to press second, enter, and it gives me my previous entry. And I can use our arrow buttons, the left arrow and the right arrow, to move. So I'm going to move on top of that subtraction, and I'm going to make it into, there we go, into addition. So rather than retype everything, um, I could simply make that one change and, do, and by doing second enter, and it allows me to um, compute this brand new value. Okay, so 
another thing, um, second answer, so that would be second and then pressing this um, negative sign, that will always give us the previous answer. And the reason why that key is important is because we want to be as exact as possible. And um, I don't know about you guys, but it's kind of a pain to write in this every time um, I was trying to compute that value or do something with that value. So it's a lot easier if I just use that second answer function. Okay, so let's say I wanted to find the square root of the above answer. I don't really need that. Okay, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to get to my square root by pressing second x squared. And then to get to second answer, second, that negative. And I just found the square root of 0 0.05120 Some of you guys already know this stuff. If you do great, you will be experts at the calculator. And um, the better you know your calculator, the easier pre-calculus is. And I'm not joking about that. Um, we use variables quite a bit in math. Um, you guys know that already. But we do have this lovely x, t, theta, n button. And even though it's representing all of those variables, whenever we want to use x, that is the button that we are going to press. Okay? Um, since squaring is the most common option, that's why we have x squared down here. The next thing I want to talk about um, before we actually get into some of the problems is um, when entering a fraction, it's really important to use parentheses around the entire fraction, around the numerator, and around the denominator. And it's good to know that however many open parentheses I have, I should have the same exact number of closed parentheses. The final thing I want to mention before we start graphing um, is the catalog feature. And I know um, as the year progresses, sometimes there's going to be some sort of function that we learn how to do, and then we're not quite sure, like, oh, where was that in the calculator? So I just want to show you, if you guys press second, zero, it brings us to the catalog. And what this catalog does, it houses all of the different functions our calculator can do. And ABS is probably one of the most common ones we would use this for. That's for absolute value. But if you look in the top right-hand corner here, it has like a capital A, and that means that it is in alpha mode. And if you look at your screen, or not your screen, if you look at your actual calculator, you'll notice those little letters I have in green. And um, A means it's in alpha mode, so it's going to read those letters. So let's say I need to do some sort of function that has an S. I'm going to press the button that has an S. And then I can see that it has all those, and I can just use the down arrow and scroll through it to find the one that I need. Okay, so that's just something good for us to know um, in case we're getting stuck on something. So now we're going to go ahead and graph. And the first thing you might want to check is your mode. Okay, we do want to be in function mode, and we want it to be connected. So you want to double check that those two things are correct. Um, let's say I was in the wrong mode. I would use the arrows to go on top of whatever I wanted and press enter. So once again, I said I want function, so I'm moving on top of that and pressing enter. Um, quite honestly, the mode that we change the most is radians and degrees. Uh, but since we're not dealing with angles at the moment, that is irrelevant. So now that I know that I'm in the right mode, I'm going to press the Y equals button. And I'm going to clear out if you have anything um, that is being currently graphed. And I'm going to go ahead and enter the function X cubed. So I'm using my X, my variable button, caret 3. And notice that this arrow here, or this little cursor, is still up in the exponent. So if I want to put something that's not in the exponent, I need to use the arrow button um, in order for it to get level again. So minus 3x minus 4. And for the moment, I'm just going to graph this one, and then we'll talk about graphing two at once. Um, the way that we should normally graph is by pressing the zoom button, which is in the middle. All five of these buttons um, deal with the graphing fe features of our calculator. 
The reason why I don't want to just press graph is because if I press graph, it will graph the last window I had in my settings. And for most of you, that might be completely fine. But um, it's a good idea to press zoom. And I'm going to choose option six, which is zoom standard. So I can either use the arrows down or I'm just going to press six. And what that's going to do for me, it's going to give me a graph that has axes of positive 10 and negative 10. Okay, so um, now this is kind of stored as my window. So if I pressed graph from here on out, it would give me this until I change that window again. So hopefully that gives you kind of a quick idea on what that's talking about. So I want to graph something else as well. So I'm going to press Y equals and I'm going to use the down arrow to get to Y sub 2 and I want to type in X plus 3. And I, I did something crazy there. So X plus 3. And once again, I'm going to press zoom 6 and I can see it's graphing the first one. It's graphing the second one. So let's talk about our window. Let's say that we want to change um, what this graph looks like. And I think the best way to think about this is it's like taking a picture with a camera. Okay, this is just a single picture of what these functions look like. We can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can use different lenses, and it does slightly change our vantage point. So I'm going to press the window button, and I can see that currently my x min and x max are both negative 10 and 10, and so are our y min and y max. The scale means that each tick mark is worth one um, particular unit. So I'm going to change this to negative 100 and positive 100 and negative 100 and positive 100. And now I'm going to go ahead and press graph. And what you guys can see is that even though this is the same function, it looks very, very different from what we saw when we did Zoom 6. Okay, so that's why it's important for us to just be aware of what our window is. The other way that we can zoom in or out is by using the zoom function. So I'm going to do zoom 6 again just to give us that pretty picture. And um, let's say I, I really cared about what was happening up here above my screen, so I want to just zoom out. We can see zoom in is option 2, zoom out is option 3. So I'm going to choose option three, zoom out. And just so you know, if you're going to zoom in, it would do um, the same exact thing. Okay, see how it's it's blinking on the cursor? I or The cursor is blinking, and it's at the origin. And I can move my arrows right or left, and down here it's telling me what that ordered pair is, which is really helpful. But I can move wherever I want, um, whatever I want to make the center of my graph. I'm going to keep it zero, zero. And then I'm just going to press enter, and it just does a nice little zoom out for me. Um, if I wanted to zoom out again, I could. And once again, zooming in is exactly the same thing. Now I'm going back to the y equals, and I want to talk about selecting. If you guys will notice, these equal signs are highlighted. That means that it is going to graph them. If I only wanted to graph one of these functions for some reason, I could put the arrow on top of the equal sign and press enter, and we can see that it unselected that particular function. So if I graphed it right now, and once again, notice I press graph, it gave me that zoomed out version we just saw, because that was the last window we had. Um, but it's only graphing that particular function for me. If I want to graph both of them, I need to move my arrow and press um, return or enter on top of that arrow again um, so that way they will both be selected. So I'm going to go ahead and do zoom 6 again and I'm going to talk about trace and that's one of the most useful things that it our graphing calculator does. Okay so I'm going to press the trace button and right away we can see it's telling me which function that our um, little blinker is on and it tells me ordered pairs. And There's a few things we can do we can move to the right or to the left, and it's telling me what different ordered pairs are, which that can be helpful at times. What I actually think is more helpful 
And um, we'll spend a lot of time talking about domain and range. But domain is the x value. That is the value that I can always control. So let's say I cared what it was when x is 2. So if I am in the trace mode and I just type in an x value, I can press enter and it automatically tells me what that y value is. So let's say x is negative 4. And I press enter. And why is it giving me an uh, error? Because remember I said earlier, um, with syntax, if I use this, the subtraction instead of a negative, there will be a mistake. Okay, so I'm going to go to it. And I know that I really need that negative. And um, the reason why I wanted to use something like negative 4, notice the y value is negative 56. We cannot see this on that screen, but that's okay. It's still telling me that that is the ordered pair that is actually on that particular function. If I want to go ahead and change to the other equation, that's when I'm going to use my up and down arrow. So I'm going to move up, and right away it tells me, okay, well, we're in y sub 2 now. And if I typed in like negative 3, and once again, I did this again. Sorry, I'm using my keyboard to type sometimes, and the negative automatically does subtraction. There we go. So that tells me that there is an ordered pair there at negative 3, 0. The final thing that we're going to talk about today, because I know it's kind of been a lot and we will slowly kind of build more material on, um, we're going to talk about finding minimums and maximums. And I just want to point out real quickly, this, this is an example of a relative maximum point. And what a relative maximum means is that it is decreasing in both directions. So this is the highest point in this particular region. We would call this point down here a relative minimum because we can see it is increasing in both directions. So I'm going to press y equals and I'm actually going to clear out my two equations. And I'm going to go ahead and type in y equals x squared. So I'm typing in x and then the squared button and notice um, if you wanted to do caret 2 that's fine as well but pressing squared automatically puts in the 2 and then brings me back down to the line okay minus 6x plus 2 and I'm going to go ahead and press zoom 6 to graph this and as this is graphing I can see that there is a relative minimum Okay, because it is the lowest point. And the way that we're going to find the relative minimum is going to be almost identical to the relative maximum. The only difference is we are going to choose minimum instead of maximum. All the other steps are going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and press second trace. And it brings up this calculate menu. And these are all things that we're going to be using this year. Um, so we said that we think that there is a minimum, so we're going to choose option three, which is minimum. And it's going to ask me left bound. And what that means is I can see that the minimum point is right here. So it's asking me, is this a point that is to the left of the minimum? And it is, so I'm going to press enter. And we don't need to be really exact. You could have chosen any point to the left of the minimum, and that's fine. Now I'm going to use my arrow to go over to the right side. And as soon as I go to the right side, it's asking me, is this right bound? And it doesn't matter how far over I go, but I'm going to say, yeah, that's right bound. And then I'm going to choose something in between there. And it tells me my minimum is at 3, negative 7. So... That's how we can find minimums and maximums, and that's most of your homework tonight, is um, graphing different functions and finding those mins and maxes. The final thing that I want to talk about is um, sometimes we will get a value that will say something like negative 6e5. And all this is, it's really um, talking about scientific notation. So that would be like 10, or like negative 6 times 10 to the negative 5th power which really means the answer is zero. So if we see something weird like that, um, we know that it's going to be zero. 
Now, this is an estimate. If I wanted to be sure that this ordered pair worked, I could substitute 3, negative 7 back into our original equation, and it should make a true statement. So that's our first intro to the graphing calculator. Um, I have another video posted that goes into more detail on some other things, and um, we will have some more graphing calculator lessons as um, I'm requiring you guys to do more work with them.